I was at Bellator over the weekend, and boy, did I see some good fights. I saw some drama. They had a selection show. The 145-pounders were going at it, which was a real treat for me. I don't know if you guys caught the selection show, and if you did not, I'm not going to start at the very beginning of trying to explain how this works, because it is a little bit confusing, unless you watched it, then you would get it. But essentially, we're down to the final eight, and every Grand Prix that Scott Coker's put on has always started with eight. He started the featherweights with 16. Okay, so a little bit different. They do round one. Now we're down to eight. So the first four guys pick between four locations. And all they have for information is the location of the event. I apologize. They have the date of the event by month. By example, they could say, okay, I want to fight in December. And somebody else goes, well, I want to fight in February. And somebody else says, all right, you guys get it. They don't know where. They don't know the exact date, but they have a month. So the first four guys go up and they get a pick. So what does that mean? Well, they pick what month they want to fight. Pitbull, by example, said, hey, I'm tired. I need some rest. The furthest out date there is is March. I'm going with March. Somebody else said, AJ McKee said, man, I'm ready to rock and roll. The first date is December. Put me in December. You guys get the point. But then the next four guys come along and they pick. Well, don't forget, wherever they pick, they now know who else is already there. So essentially, you're calling an opponent out, which adds to the drama. But the beauty of it, is it provided a very rare time in this sport where you have some level of amenity over your own career. You have some level of say. You have some level in direction and some level of who my opponent is going to be. It's very rare, but it also makes things very fair. So they had this selection show, which I thought was great. Pitbull took on Archuleta. I really thought Archuleta was the man for this job, and I still do. Even in hindsight with the result, I thought Archuleta was valiant out there. The first time I ever saw Juan Archuleta fight, I was in Thackerville, Oklahoma. I was working with Mike Goldberg, and Archuleta comes out, and he was like, you know, 21 wins and one loss at the time, some crazy record. He fights. He looks amazing. They go to commercial. I turn to Goldberg. I said, that guy's going to fight for the championship. That guy's incredible. And that was about two years ago. Archuleta never lost. He extends his record to whatever it is. And that one lone loss spread over two weight classes, gets the title fight, tells everybody, I'm going to go out. I'm going to pressure Pitbull. That's how I'm going to beat him. I'm going to weaponize pace. The guy's not going to be able to hold up. And Archuleta even said he will not answer the bell after the fourth round. Now, that is a very wild prediction. I've never heard of anybody predicting they were going to win a fight by the opponent not answering the bell, but I don't give a damn. I'm in. He convinced me. This is going to be about a 20-minute fight. Now, he didn't convince me he was going to win. I didn't know. This was a hard fight. But he did convince me that about 20 minutes in, we're going to be seeing a war. And Archuleta did everything he said he was going to do. He went out there. He put a pace on Pitbull. He brought the action. But it didn't come down to grit. Many fights do particularly championship fights that are 25 minutes. Grit, toughness, heart, determination, really play a factor. Pitbull held up every, every step of the way. So then it came down to skill, and it was just a matter of who's the better fighter. It turned out Pitbull was just a better fighter. And I can share with you that nobody that does this sport minds losing on skill. Now, of course, they want to win every contest and they're greedy and they're hungry and it's, it's their dream. I get all of those things, but I'll just share with you. Nobody minds losing on skill. They mind losing on toughness, on heart, on determination. That's when it bothers them. You can't really do anything about your skill. It's a two-man sport. You bring your tools, but he brings his tools too. Generally, you can find some kind of intangible where you can wear the guy down and he just doesn't want it bad enough. That's just not what happened. Pitbull did want it. He held everything was great. Archuleta did exactly what Archuleta said he was going to do. It came down to a battle of skill. Okay, great. Turn to the judges, see what they thought. Pitbull wins. But I thought it was a great match. I thought it was the right match. And I think as this tournament evolves, in many ways, possibly Pitbull just got his hardest work out of the way, right up front, possibly. On paper, I think that argument could definitely be made. In practicality, let's wait and see how things play out. Moving to... The final match, which was Machida versus Masasi. This was just a really close match if you guys didn't see it. When this ended, somebody had turned to me and said, hey, Chael, who do you think won? I kind of shrugged my shoulder. Ah, I think Machida won. 
And it ended up being a split decision. One judge did give it to Machida. Two judges gave it to Masasi, but it was very close. And there was one instant in the very first round where Machida went down. It looked very clear from where I was sitting that he slipped, that he just kind of slipped. He went down, he spun around, he was up in well less than a second. But it could also be interpreted that Gegar knocked him down. Not what I saw, but it could be interpreted that way. I think that may be what swayed the judges. But overall, it was a very close match. And when you're playing that game with Machida, which is a lot of movement and very little touching, right? Very little attacks, but a whole lot of movement, a whole lot of evasiveness. I thought this was a fairly action-packed bout. Three rounds was enough. They've now been in there eight rounds with each other. They've split who what right Machida won one, Musashi won one. I don't think they need to go to a trilogy. These guys don't appear to have any real heat with each other. But it does help set up that division moving into 2020, where it appears that Gegarg is going to rematch Lovato for the championship.